In this video, we're going to process a brick material. Now, working with structured materials inside of Art Engine is quite difficult. Um, you might have seen some videos using the structure guide to do bricks. Um, instead, what I'm going to use is something called mutation revision to create a spot healing tool to do the tiling for this brick material. As an added bonus, at the end of the video, I'll also talk about how I use the Art Engine style transfer node to create this graffiti decal inside of Unity. Looking inside of 3D Zephyr, um, this is the sample that we're going to be working with today. This was shot on a windy, cloudy day, so the time of day did kind of change a little bit. Um, that's which is why you notice the bottom third is a little bit darker than the top, so that's going to be one of the problems that we need to fix. Um, also, this shadowing from the bricks is not the most ideal, so we're going to try to do our best inside of Arnaden to clean that up. Um, working with structure stuff like this is also very difficult to, to tile with the AI, but I'm going to show you a little bit of a hack inside of Art Engine. So let's get this thing baked out and then we'll jump right into Art Engine. So in the previous video, I used the Unity delighting tool to remove the lighting from the bark. So I tried to do the same with the brick material here and I got kind of a, a strange result. So the trick to fix this is to actually use a mask. So let's plug that in, and you'll see that we have a really, really nice D-lit albedo. Um, so I kind of removed some of that shadowing information on the bottom side. So I didn't know this at the time of the recording, um, and the mask that you want to put in is something like this. So we just have the grout as black and then the bricks as red, and then we have a much better delighting result. Lucky enough, the dev was kind enough to show me how to use the Udemy delighting tool correctly in this case. So what you're going to see inside of Art Engine is kind of just a bunch of hacks to remove the lighting. Uh, but next time I can use the tool a bit better uh, for our next video. All right, same story as before. It's going to drag and drop my maps into Art Engine. Um, the first thing we're going to do is work on the albedo map um, because there's still a bit of lighting in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the normal map channels and grab the green channel and I'm just going to invert that and then re-blend that on top of the albedo map um, as a soft light mode. And what that's going to do is get rid of some of the shadowing that was present in the original capture that were kind of like caught underneath the bricks. So you kind of see that before and then the after. So kind of got rid of some of that stuff. Um, it did kind of like darken a little bit of the top there, but it's a little bit subtle. So um, the next thing we need to do is also remove some of that gradation that was happening, kind of like near the bottom. Um, this capture was taken over the course of quite a windy, cloudy day. So the clouds were actually moving quite a bit, which is why you have quite a bit of gradation in this. So a little bit of gradi uh, gradient removal helped resolve that, which is pretty cool. I'm going to pop that into and albedo generation, just to kind of like level things out even more. Um, because it's really subtle ambient inclusion shadow detail that I'm trying to remove here, I'm not gonna put the height map into it. Um, it just takes a little bit too long to compute. Um, so I did find that using the albedo gen is quite similar to doing a desaturated albedo, inverting it, and then soft lighting it back onto the original albedo. So it gives a pretty similar result. However, the albedo generation will actually let you kind of like overdrive that effect, uh, which will allow you to kind of like level out your albedo just a bit more. So always put a levels node after using that node just to kind of bring back some of the color and kind of add a little bit more contrast to it. There you go. So it's a bit flatter looking, so it's not too bad. Cool, so the next thing we're going to look at now is um, the height map. So the height map that got baked out was not the greatest, like it had a little too much gradation into it. Um, so I'm just going to put that through a quick gradient removal. Um, that's not the ideal situation. You want your baking plane to be quite flat on it. Um, I'll tell you, this is what, so this is what happens. Um, so you see that when I'm doing a height blend, it's not blending evenly across the bricks. But as soon as I do a gradient removal on the height map, it kind of levels things out. When I do a height blend, get a really nice even gradation. Uh, sorry, an even blend from the bricks to the grout. 
and that's more ideal for this situation. Cool, so I'm going to compose this into a full material, and then we're just going to start and set up our 3D viewer just so we can see what we're doing a bit better. There we go. And what I want to do is just check the height um, just to make sure that things are displacing correctly after I put it through the greener removal. Cool, so that's looking a bit better. Okay, cool. So now the next thing that we need to do, and this is the difficult part of doing bricks, is fixing the seam line. So I'm going to put it through a standard seam removal, but I'm going to put a value of 0.1. You'll notice that the seam removal still says 0. If you do any value under 1, it's, it's going to read as 0. But you can put 0.5 or 0.1, which is what I'm doing here. It'll just still read as 0, so it's still a bit of a UI issue. And what I'm trying to do here with the 0.1 value is just kind of really quickly get rid of that tiny, tiny seam because when I set up my baking plane, I did it in a way that most of the grout is aligning, so I don't need to do too much seam removal. So here's the little hack that I'm doing. Um, I'm using an offset of 50% on the entire material, and then I'm going to run this through a seam removal with a value of zero. So now my seam line um, for the bricks is down the middle of the material, and I'm going to do a seam removal of zero because I actually want to use the mutation revision tool without actually doing any seam removal. And what this is going to allow me to do is kind of like hack a smart clone stamp out of the mutation revision tool. So I'll show you what I mean once I get this plugged in. So I'm just going to grab the widget and just kind of go over one of the bricks. So this one, you know, it's not too bad. Like it's just two tones kind of mixing together, but we're going to just try and run the mutation revision on it. And now it kind of makes it more, you know, blended looking version of that brick. And this is the one that's going to be a little bit hard to do. So we're going to execute it a couple times. Um, so the first time didn't work. We'll re-execute it. And hey, that's looking actually pretty cool. So we'll grab another one. Um, you know, I can't say that this is like the most perfect brick creator. You'll see that one actually is kind of a mix of the orange and red ones. Um, really depends on how picky you want to be with this kind of stuff. Um, Art Engine doesn't currently have like a manual clone stamp, so this is the next best thing in my opinion for now. Um, I used the same technique in my other video where I did the cracked asphalt to regenerate cracked lines between uh, segments. So that one kind of did some weird stuff and I'm just going to hit execute again and then execute again. And that one's looking a bit better. So they're not completely perfect, unfortunately. Um, you know, sometimes the lines get a little bit skewed depending on the brick orientation. But um, after the video, I actually went back in here and played around this note a little bit more just to correct some of the, the errors that you're seeing. Um, here. So there was a couple other videos that are have shown Art Engine doing bricks where you use the structure guide and you actually draw all the grout lines. Um, that's definitely an option that you can do with this, but I kind of wanted to try something a little bit more interactive and I didn't really want to draw that annoying structure guide. So just checking it out in 3D Viewer. So that last one was actually pretty good. So my recommendation when it comes to doing structural stuff inside of Art Engine is, you know, set up your, your baking plane and set up your initial material as close to tiling as possible. Um, I know that's not always possible, but, you know, you want to do everything you can to make the software, sorry, give the software the best chance of success when running these algorithms. So I'm just going to offset it back to 50. So that's closer to its original, original state. You know, I'm just going to glance over the, the seam line again. And then just checking out the tiling. You know, it's, it's not looking too bad. I mean, so some of the, the bricks that you can start to see that we did 
run the mutation revision on look a little bit crooked. Um, again, as I mentioned, in my final renders, I did go back and kind of spot heal them a little bit with the same tool. So next up is just generating the roughness map. I'm going to use one of the presets. Um, so again, the presets are just starting points. Um, they kind of set something, so a set a, a value that you can start with, and you want to just really tweak it from there. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to invert the ambient occlusion map and place the levels onto it. And what I want to do with this is essentially grab as much as the grout of the grout as I can, and also any like pock marks as well, because I do want those areas in the roughness map to be uh, rougher than the rest. <clears throat> so something like this, and I'm just using a linear dodge in this case to blend back on the original roughness map, and I'm just kind of playing with the opacity here. So what I'm trying to do here is just imply some dust buildup in the crevices. So I'm using the ambient occlusion map to dictate where the crevices are, and then blending that back onto the original roughness map. That way when the light kind of hits it on a nice angle, you start to kind of get a bit of a storytelling going on. Um, so I always mention that the roughness maps that I'm doing here are pretty quick and dirty. Um, roughness maps are really good for telling stories, but you know, just for the sake of time for these videos, I kind of do these like quick and dirty versions. Cool, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna desaturate the albedo map and then convert this into a normal map using the height. Sorry, using the, using the height selection in the normal generation node. And we're gonna lower the value like way, way down to, I believe about ends up being about two. And what I'm trying to do with this is just to get some like really, really fine micro detail um, that you just can't really reconstruct with photogrammetry unless you have like a super duper camera, which I don't. Um, so I'm just re-blending this back onto the baked normal. So now we're just getting a ton of extra crunch. So I'm just gonna go, so that's before and then after. So this type of, this like method works really well with surfaces like this, where it has a lot of like pock marks and like, you know, divots into it, because you'll see that when I'm looking at it with just the gray material, the flat material, um, it's looking pretty cool. It just adds a bit more punch to your, your normal map. So we're just gonna go ahead and just recompose the entire material. So just hooking up the normal map, height map, that roughness map, and then the ambient occlusion map. So nothing too fancy there. It's kind of going over everything before we do an export. And just like one final check in the 3D viewer. Looking pretty cool, it's moving the light around, checking the normal map. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually loading my own sphere. Um, the sphere that comes with Art Engine kind of has this weird tiling thing to it where it just kind of stretches. So I made my own where it just tiles a lot better. Um, and then we're just checking it out on this guy. It's looking pretty cool. So there was a, a bit of chalk writing on that one brick there, but I kind of left it. I thought that was kind of cool. So um, definitely could have used the mutation revision to spot heal that section, but uh, I'm just gonna leave it for now. And this time we're gonna use the export to Unity node. So we're not gonna do any Marmoset stuff in this video. Um, so I'm just gonna export this directly into my Unity project and just give it a name and then ex export. And what this will do is it'll turn your roughness map into a smoothness map. And it'll also do the mass map for you. So it'll pack the, the RGB A map for you. So it's more Unity friendly, essentially. So on the Unity side, just ensure that you have the Artomatics Art Engine plugin installed for this to actually pick up correctly. So this guy is just exporting, packing everything for you. And then we're, we're gonna jump into Unity and you'll see that it auto detected the export. I chose HDRP lit for my render pipeline. And then now 
it's going to bring on all the bitmaps and also assemble the full material for you. So I'm just in the sample scene here. And there's my brick, so pretty cool. So we've got everything assigned. Um, so now I can just kind of drag and drop that onto the shader sphere here, and there we go. So there's the final material. Um, like I mentioned, I did kind of go through and just tweak a little bit of it after the fact, but um, let's go check in, check out the uh, the render scene that I did. Okay, so inside of Unity again, this is my render scene that I have set up. Uh, nothing too fancy, just a plane with a area light and environment map. And let's go do our standard check on the normals and height. So I'm just going to remove the albedo. I'm just going to lower this down a bit. And of course, you can always go and just kind of play with your normal map inside of Unity as well and mess around the displacement. So we can kind of overdrive it if we need to. Um, but yeah, that's looking pretty cool. So um, some of that micro normal that we added there is looking quite nice on the surface. Okay, so as promised, this is the scene with the decal applied. So I just have this uh, simple decal actor in my Unity scene. So nothing special about this, it just has the alpha channel embedded in the albedo map. Um, so inside of Art Engine, I just started off with a eyeball that I found on Google. I did a little crazy seam removal on this just to make, just kind of fill up the space a little bit more. And then I did a bit of compositing, so I added the old Artmatics logo in the eye. I also did that inside of Art Engine. I have my style graffiti that I want to match, and then this is what comes out of it in the style transfer node. So a thing to note about this node, it's still not publicly released. So I just wanted to give you all a sneak preview of what it can do. Great, thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.